On October 16, 1949, Mayor Bob embarked on a new life. In this new life, he disposed of all of his property, his buildings, even the pots and pans that had been used in the ashrams. Baba, who had up till then been playing the role of the perfect God-realized master, now played the role of the perfect seeker. His, along with 20 companions, including four women, they traveled all through India. It was a life of helplessness and hopelessness, begging for their food, often without shelter for the evening. Uh, one of the Mandalik later said that no one who was not there could imagine the hardships they went through, and yet all of the suffering was nullified by Baba's presence. Now the play that you're about to see, uh, the episode in this play, comes from a phase in the new life during which Baba was searching for uh, families that had once been prosperous but had fallen into complete destitution. Baba would travel long distances he would look for these families, search them out, and then without saying who he was, he would go and he would wash their feet, he would bow down to them, and he would give them a gift of a few rupees, and also the priceless treasure of his love, and then he would leave once again, oftentimes without them having any idea who he was. This particular story is set in southern India on the night of Diwali, the great Hindu festival of lights, that uh, coincidentally is a little similar to our 4th of July, there's a lot of noise and celebrating on that one. Now, Baba himself is one of the characters in the play, but just as when he was among us as a man, we were unable to hear him except in his silence. In this play, you will not be able to see him except in your mind's eye. So sit back and enjoy the play, A Tale of New Life, J. Baba. Hymns in praise of the Ancient One, God-Man, Avatar, who has taken birth in this age to walk the earth in the form of Meher Baba. I have followed you, beloved, in my heart's mirror, from the earliest days in your, your childhood, and on through school, past a tree sheltering the humble throne of Hazrat Babajan, the Empress, where realization dropped into your hands like a ripened fruit. Through Sheridan and Sikori, Kuna, Manzilimin, the opening of your great world ashram at Meribad, the Prem Ashram, a journey to the west, where gopis' hearts were gathered in like grapes, fresh for the wine press. Then, back to India, for long and dusty treks, by foot, train, bullet cart, to the remotest hamlet or crowded city street, where, veiled in rags, dwell your beloved children, your musts, the fire of whose love song consumes the mortal pen. Thus have I traced, and seen with the rapt eyes of my soul seeing, for I'm the voice of that longing that smolders in the memories of humankind. Born in the after days, hearing your lovely name, after the coat of many colors had been cast away, now must I span the widening the gulf of years upon the wings of my imagining, that I might see, and know, and make this heart, this barren glass, a witness to your glory. But what new turn is this, O oh my beloved? What renunciation have we heard rooted across the skyways? But you have closed your long-time ashram at Mirabai, sold off all its effects, and taken to the road. We're now one of the caravan of 21 companions who lead a life of helplessness and hopelessness. Wandering beggars whose sole reliance is on God. Among the dusty road, I hear a caravan. We just clatter in, horses to think. Here in the dawn, O oh, King, where are your leashmen? Your queen and fortress and your throne and home and scepter, Lord, where have they gone? And yet, O oh, Mayor, though you give it up the palace, in this part, you forever reign supreme. Heart and sliver of the broken chalice, 
Does he now? Then let, let him take up his residence elsewhere. He's too good a neighbor for me. But I could tell you a story, but never mind. There's a gentleman waiting. Oh, uh, one coconut? Oh, why did you take several? I can give you a good price, a good bargain. Oh, all right. Six Anna then, please. Thank you, and God be with you. <clears throat> a story you were saying. What do you mean? Oh, yes, about the rows. That's a common name hereabouts. Ah, but these weren't common people. They were millionaires. <laughs> they move off or die? You speak in the past tense. <laughs> Just trying to remember about the row. <laughs> they were millionaires or so rumor made them. I never met them myself. They didn't live here in Madras, but in a town 80 kilometers away from here. So what happened to them? They move on? <laughs> more likely, more likely your God moved in with them. To judge by their affairs, a complete reversal. They lost everything. Once they were living in a rich bungalow with a car, garden, servants, and a dog. And now they're beggars, or worse still, they're too, they have too much pride to beg. So I guess they must feed themselves on air, I suppose. I could, al yeah. I could almost pity them, but I have enough, enough of my own <laughs> Well, is there a moral we could be drawing from this, honey? Well, haven't you yourself just drawn it? How quickly our fortunes fall. And who is there to catch us when our luck lets us down? And that you have answered, uh, begging your pardon. For weren't we just saying that God rescues those who trade in their riches for their rags? If so, then, the rows would make him good clients, for they were generous and kindly folk. And they They lost all their children except the dog. They lost all their children. <laughs> they lost all their children except for a daughter who, who tends to them. She has no more means than they. No, no more prospects for marriage without a dowry. Who their relatives are and why they haven't offered her a hand, I couldn't say. Excuse me, did you mention the names of these people? And if I did, what is it to you? I just want to know. My elder brother works much in the field of charity, and maybe he could arrange something for them. The name is Rao, as I said before. But you don't want to go there now. It's Diwali, the festival of life. Do you have an address? They live in Gadur. That's all I know. If your brother is so concerned with charity, why wouldn't he start closer to home? I have five children and a wife to support. <laughs> and I can see that you're doing a fine job of it. Thank you. Thank you for your information. Good day. Well, now, there's a strange fellow dropping our conversation when he's got what he wants and off again with hardly a fairly well. Who could this older brother be who seems to have a purse of gold to brighten every sad story? Yes, who indeed. Yet I think, I think perhaps I know. Now, where are you off to? Whatever has possessed everyone today, I think the world is taking leave of its senses and is going on a mission. I beg your pardon, friend, but is that your elder brother ahead, the one leading with the quick step? Is that who? You see, I couldn't help overhearing what you were saying to the coconut vendor a few moments ago. Your elder brother looks familiar to me. Could he I be... think you've mistaken us for someone else. But, but where are you going? To the station where we'll catch a train out of Madras, but I'm late already, so please don't detain me. But what are your names and where do you come from? Surely you're not just a band of gypsies wandering aimlessly. And if we have chosen to leave our names behind, do you think that you can pin them back upon us? Brother, let me join you. Let me join your group. For I'm tired of my shackles and want to stake my life on the gamble that this moment has offered me. Brother, the door opens to each of us at its appointed time. But for you to join in our company today is not in your share. Please accept that. 
and let me bid you farewell. I'm being called for. God support you in your endeavors. And so they are departed, faded into the night, like specters shimmering in a dream. For thus the real always must appear to those in bondage. O oh, glorious ancient one, the tattered rags of your humanity cannot conceal the radiance that you are. To hide yourself from us, has that not been your age-old game? And yet, good bloodhounds we, in time we sniff you out, for there about you lingers that fragrance, faint, ineffable, what our hearts and souls most hunger for. And so, across the gap of many miles, eschewing services, car or train, but in mind's leaping flash, I pass, pursuing my beloved's tracks like fair oases blooming in the desert, it is the history of humankind. This world is but a storyland whose scenes constantly change. Then let us dream upon that lovely dream that was his life among us. Boy? Sir? Boy, uh, can you tell me the name of this town? This is Gadur. How could you not know that? I'm a stranger traveling from a long distance. But you're sure this is the door I've come to? Sure, I'm sure. I've lived here all my life. That is my house across the street. See? Yes, indeed. And why? But tell me, how do I call you? Ram Ram. And tell me, Ram, why does your family burn so many lights? What? I can't see a single door or window without a candle or oil with lamp beaconing from it. Are you expecting some special guest? You must really be a stranger to not know the answer to that. That is the Diwali. The Festival of Lights. So someone was telling me a short while back. But this is the first I've seen of it. I don't know how you missed it. The road you've been walking on leads straight from the bazaar. Every every stall, every window, every nook and alley has a light shining from it. Didn't you see the crowds bustling about and kids like me waving flares and sparklers? Didn't you hear the shouts, pops, and bangs coming? From the dark lane ahead? And didn't you see the, the lanterns glimmering between the banyan branches down, down the street? You're right. I don't know how I overlooked it all. I, I cannot stay with you much longer now. My mother expects me home for dinner. But if my father allows, I will be <coughs> out long into the night. Goodbye. Goodbye. Diwali, the festival of shining mirrors when all creation decks herself in her brightest array, as there can be no heart so low, so debased, so much by sin enshrouded from the knowledge of itself, that the true light of God's infinitude has failed to take its seat there. So tonight, each outer face displays similitude of that great sun which ever burns within. O oh, radiant one, your flames of incandescence bloom like a thousand variegated blossoms, sway like a thousand colored lamps adorning the vault of heaven. And in this panoply, in which your praise is everywhere emblazoned, but where are you? Where in the teeming mass of likenesses is the original? Where in the jostling crowd of eyes and faces are the eyes of knowingness and the face divine? Ever it is your way, and her beloved, to hide yourself behind those very signs through which you are declared. For what you are, no eye has seen, nor tongue has ever spoken.
native to this town? I come from the far. Don't you recognize me? Should I? But how could you, when the child that once I was has not yet been born? The one who travels with you no doubt would know me well. But what do you want of me? If you're a stranger, you probably couldn't tell me what I need to know. Are you looking for someone? A poor family, though this hardly seems the neighborhood where poor folk would dwell. Mm. Yet yeah, rich facades may mask impoverished hearts. Why not ask at the house across from us? The family name is Rao. Is it indeed? I was told that a family by that name lived here. Though these can hardly be the ones I seek, but I'll inquire. Yes. I beg your pardon for troubling you, but my elder brother has sent me in search of a gentleman named Rao. I'm Rao. What do you want? Excuse me. There must be some mistake. I was told that a poor man lived at this address. Again, what rubbish is this? Are you, are you thinking I am a beggar? Are you trying to insult me? Not at all, sir. It's just that my brother has come to good or in search of some family in great need. Well, why didn't your brother come here in person then? But wait, refrain from doing so, from asking him, because you don't see any indigenous wastrels around here. But Papa, he must be talking about Uncle and Auntie. Rob, keep quiet. <laughs> but Papa, this is the very house we built for them, and then they moved in. We moved in after they could not pay. Rob, do you want a whipping? Go back to the table. <laughs> I do not wish to trouble you any further, and I'll soon be on my way. But could you tell me where your relatives live? I don't have any relations. Another family by the name of Rao, then. My brother wishes to speak with them. Well, who is this brother of yours, anyway? Is he some lawyer? <laughs> Do I look like I would have a lawyer for a brother? We are simply passing through. We have no business or connections here. But my brother has a call to answer. And he wants to give something to a man. A man named Rao. He's poor, not an important man of the world like yourself. Even now, my brother is waiting at the train station, and as soon as we've concluded our business, we'll be off. Papa, I'll, I'll show them the way. I promise I won't visit. I don't want you going there. Papa, Papa, it's the Diwali. I, I promised my friends after supper I would look at all the lights. Papa, Papa, you promised. Oh, okay, you can go, but you, when you find the house, make sure you bring my son back here, and I don't want to see you around here again. Come, it isn't now. And so the emissary of the Great One, that all-possessing beggar, who knows well the ways of destitution, has found the way to where the hidden destitute are dwelling. The poor are God's greatest similitude upon the earth, for like that great fakir, they own that nothing, that is everything. Thus, he is theirs, and they are his. The world knows not this truth, that those whom it rejects, dear God has taken as his special own. Do you know where we're going? Your father wouldn't want you to get lost. He'd blame both you and me. I come this way with my friends sometimes. It isn't far now. Hmm. Ah, the neighborhood has changed. The buildings have become decrepit. The roads are choked with filth. My brother says only beggars and untouchables live in this district. It's not likely to come to Yet even here the festival crowds are swarming and candles beacon from tenement windows. But what is this dead end that you've brought me to here? This house must be deserted for it's completely dark inside. But this is where my uncle and aunt live. But you are wrong. There's a candle burning in the hall. Huh. So there is and a young woman kneeling in prayer. Not a stick of furniture, and yet she has kept a life-size statue of Lord Krishna and worships it on a night when others have given themselves over to gaiety. That is my cousin Mira. She's very religious. But can I go now? I've showed you the way as I promised. Yes, be off with you. Have a good night of it. Goodbye. This must be the home of the Rao's that Baba wishes to contact. But what to do now? It would not be right to disturb her in the middle of her prayers, yet Baba is waiting and I've been much delayed already. Mai, open the door. Who is it? What do you want? I'm a friend. Who? What friend? I don't know you. 
How do you say your friend? Who sent you? I'm sent by my elder brother who wishes to meet an older gentleman named Ralph. Would that be your father? Is he in? Well, yes, he's here. But who is your elder brother and why does he wish to see my father? He wants to pay his respects. You needn't worry. We're friends. My brother knows your people. My father is inside. Please come. My parents are both here. I see. Is he asleep? They are very sick and have not eaten today. I would like to bring you tea, but I have none in the house. Will you wait and I will get you some? Don't worry about tea. Listen, I must go now and fetch my elder brother who has come from Bombay and is waiting for me at the train station. My brother has some business with your father. Business? What business could he have? How could they know each other? Nothing to be afraid of. My brother knows your people. He knows you well. He has in mind to render some aid to you. Will you promise me something? Will you wait here till I come back? Then everything will be made clear to you. Yes, I will wait. Then I'll see you shortly. O oh, night, deep night, when all the stars go out, when all the resonating cries of human aspiration fade to the echoless silence, on such a night, beloved God may give himself. It is the way of men to take in giving, and so to give to those who have what they desire. But only love can love in emptiness. Just so did God take for his bride the fair creation, who in truth was not. But when he drew her to him, when he had wrapped her in his arms, he found his love had made them one, and he himself, infinite being, became his gift to her. And so does the love of God impart itself into those hearts by need and dearth aggrieved, for not alone can hold him in his fullness. Oh, look how shining sun can never be told How can white men proclaim Is it sleeping in the fall That night that makes the darkness cease to be While I still read how to say
I have returned with my elder brother as I promised. May we enter? And what is he planning to do, this elder brother of yours? What love gift can even he bring to such broken lives as these? Where did you come from? Who are you to be intruding on our affairs? I'm no one in particular. A voice in your mind. A phantom from the world of his lovers still to be born. From time to time I have thought of you. For I have known, of course, that this bounty could not be reserved forever for the few of us. That one day all humanity would clamor to join in the feast. Yet what am I to say of such a one? His every glance and gesture overflows with a thousand miracles. But even those with the eyes to see lack the tongues to tell of it. What does your dumbness matter? His silence declares for itself as your words could never do. Yet speak anyway and explain to me, why is Baba's manner so abrupt with them? He doesn't ask their names or inquire after their health, but sets straight to work. Doesn't he wish to comfort them? Might not his loving words supply that touch that has won so many hearts to him in the past? He has often done as you say, yet it is not for Bala to offer mere consolation <coughs> according to the mind's understanding, but the true love gift, as God best knows that it should be. But why is Baba kneeling before the old couple? And why is his disciple bringing with him a veil and basin? Basin, and now he's filling the, the basin with water. So that Baba may wash the old man's feet. It is his long-standing habit to serve and worship thus before the poor and the old and the leprous. Doing so, he glorifies in them the divine person in the frail guise of humanity's greatest unfortunates. And having completed these ablutions, Baba presses his forehead to the old man's feet. O oh, my master, why do you humble yourself thus? For who could be greater than you? It is to his own self he bows down. For he knows himself and everyone. O oh God, unspeakable is your love, which you lavish upon us unawares. And now Baba rises up from his prostrations and offers a, a packet, an envelope, it seems. What does this mean? He gives a gift of money to serve to their material need. From this small seed, what harvest one day will arise? But now he speaks. Friends say, Bhikshaw DGA. What does he say? Accept this gift of love and oblige us. But it's Baba who is given. Why should he be obliged? To give of love is only his nature. But for us to accept this, this gift, we must surrender our false selves. By this act, we bind him to us. What fools we are that he must cajole us into accepting our own good fortune. But now, swiftly, Baba rises, and without an instant's further ado, strides briskly to the door. His work is done. He is the moment of present action. Why should he linger in his own shadow? But when the substance stirs, the contingencies realign their ranks. So I, one of his shadows, must follow him. has graced her desperate hour. How could I ever have doubted you? How could I ever have thought that you fail your lovers in their need? The tide of love is flowing in her heart. How could she know that the very God she gives her thanks to, just now in the flesh, is standing in her very house? Oh, beloved, I thought I had come to the end of all hope. But then, at last, this night. My griefs are past. My griefs are past my endurance. I had hardly begun to beseech you. The words of my prayer had hardly escaped my lips when you sent help. Timely indeed was her beloved's coming. No happenstance was this. Behind the veil of chance lies the design of love. Oh, Krishna, all the world has rejected us. Even our relations treat us as strangers. But you are with us still, 
And you are the emperor of all. I would rather have you than all the wealth and finery that once brought us friends. If losing the world has won us you, then let me lose it again, now and a thousand times. Oh, Krishna, you are the son of all my happiness, the caress healing my every wound. Oh, Krishna, Govinda, love, you are my sweetheart forever. The name of Meher means compassion. Krishna Meher. Meher Krishna, the name is ours, for by your name we know you. Yet behind the veil of names, you move within the darkness. Black night, the dazzle with a thousand candles, and every point of light projects your image in different hue and mode. Who really are you, that in this nakedness we call the new life, you slough these guises? <coughs> Acting namelessly through that facade each heart most cherishes, but that you are not. Emptiness into emptiness is love's consummation, and your sudden movement through our lives, the touch that thaws our winters, the face that steals all eyes, are but an arrow speeding baneful death to the phenomenal, a golden word through which our song expires into silence. Hymns and praise of the Ancient One are we, when molded after you. Felled by your dart across the gulf of years, and on this stage of our demise, your new life is enacted, now and evermore. Through helplessness and infinite power, the gift of love her way. Through such forfeiture to down the pride of heart to the passion of her, to the Lord their wedding day. Oh, the transfer is deep and then where desires perish and dreams are shed. Dreams are shed, the dead are living in the living world. 